second takrade uh, as part of the growing stakeholder demand for the programs who have a local or district level footprint uh, formed what we call cost district citizens monitoring team in the eight district that we're working within the, within the western region so second takrade ekma Efia Kwesimin team, Shama District, Mpawa District, Nzima East, and Osuta Kwanswai Municipal Assembly. So we have these monitoring teams that are helping the program to have a local level footprint in terms of implementation of its assurance recommendations and also making sure these teams are capable of instituting their own social audit processes, making sure publicly funded projects are monitored and delivered according to the specifications and also meets citizens' expectations. So as part of our journey with the monitoring team, uh, we'll build their capacity in social accountability tools like social audits and also uh, participatory monitoring using costs electronic infrastructure monitoring tools. And the attempts of reference as, as part of this capacity building was to test their hands on the tools in the area of applying the tools to assess the level of impact of those projects within their, within their districts. So they chose two projects and they conducted extensive social impact assessments or social audits on them for them to identify findings, uh, make recommendations and also together with their various assemblies co-create an action plan towards implementation of those recommendations. The Municipal Health Direct Office and actually the work done on it was renovation. If the building became a dead trap and renovation had to be done on it. So the entire objective of the social audit for us was to assess the effectiveness of project interventions and then um, their impact on the social well-being of the communities that we work in. From the presentations so far, for me, we are on the right track. If the uh, local assemblies will continue to uh, collaborate with them to do such work, it will help us to, you know, bring about the transparency and accountability that we are all looking for when it comes to project uh, delivery. In the Ahanta Waste Municipality, uh, we monitored two projects. One is the construction of three unit classroom blocks with ancillary facilities at Aguna MA Basic School. And the other one is the construction of a 2.1 Damte Domiabra wood. It's a double seal bituminous wood. Our key recommendations was that when we went to the field, we saw that uh, with that of the wood, um, initially they told us that it is going to include a pedestrian walkway on both sides of the road. But during our visit to the site, we saw that uh, it wasn't there. So we recommended to the assembly that uh, they make sure that the contractor includes it to avoid pedestrian knockdowns because that wood is a very busy wood. And that of the school, we also saw that um, the PVC pipes, pipes connecting the toilet seats and then the septic tanks, all of them have broken off, probably due to inferior products that were used. So we also recommended to the assembly that uh, the contractor should be called back to come and fix it because of the sanitation and hygiene that must be improved in this school. The STMA uh, District Monitoring Team uh, monitored two projects within the metropolis. One being the school training centre which was built under the EU-sponsored project, which is the Twin Cities in Sustainable Partnership Project. We monitored this project to see its fitness for purpose. And one major thing we identified with this project is that we saw one of the pillars has developed serious cracks, which has compromised the building's uh, integrity. And so we suggest that as a matter of urgency, the implementing partner, which is the Secretariat of the TCSPP project, should 
see to it that this major crack is repaired. And also, we also monitored the three unit classroom block, which was built at Bishop Senior JHS. One thing that we saw with this project is that the disability access route to this facility is not thoroughly done. And then even though as insignificant as this may be, we think that this will hamper the movements of disabled people to this facility. So we think the implementing partners involved should immediately see to it that this, this anomaly is done. For us, um, Shamar District's citizen monitoring team, we conducted a social audit um, activity on the construction of Kofekuche compound, which has currently been upgraded to a health center. Um, we found out that there are some disability features lacking at the facility, such as doorways, restroom seats, and grab bars at the washrooms. So we recommend the district assembly to make sure that those issues have been resolved. For Wasai's district assembly, the monitoring team conducted a social audit on a three units classroom block at Kakabu, which uh, from our audit we found out that the projects are started showing some signs of deterioration with lightning problems and poorly installed window frames and also leakages emerging just some months after the project was handed over, imposing a significant risk to students and also to the staff. And we are recommending that the assembly uh, should also strengthen community involvement for the community to maintain and also to foster a sense of ownership for the project. For FNA Question Meeting Municipal Assembly, which is ECMA, I and my team embarked on two main projects, which is Hindu Healthcare Centre and Asake Market Pavement. Upon our research, we came out with two key findings, which is um, Hindu Healthcare Centre wasn't having a laboratory and Asake Market Pavement to was having a rusted uh, roofing due to that it's leading to leakage when it, it rains. So based on that we had a recommendation that um, the emergency health committee should champion the construction of the laboratory by end of 2025. We conducted the social audit on two major projects. And one is the construction of a two normal unit kindergarten block, and the other is a fire service complex. Now, two key findings upon our investigations. For the kindergarten block, we found that there's another contractor using the classrooms for the storage of his materials and also accommodating his workers. And then when it comes to the fire service, even though the project is a completed one, landscaping of the project has not been done. As a result, the place is weedy and it looks like an abandoned project. Now, we recommend that as far as the uh, kindergarten block is concerned, the contractor who is using the facility to, uh, for storing his materials and accommodating his site workers should be made to vacate the premises. And then the fire service, the contractor should be asked to uh, do the landscaping of the facility so that the facility can look like uh, a new facility and it can reveal it through aesthetic beauty. For us in the in my east uh, district, uh, we conducted uh, two social audits, one on the district health district office and the other on the DVL office. With respect to the Health Directorate Office, we found out that it is an old building that was renovated. The frontage of the office is not disability friendly. And then when we conducted the other uh, social audit on the DVLA office, we found out that the community members were not engaged at the consultation stage. So this created 
a rift between the youth and the leadership of the community. Based on our findings, we recommended to the district assembly that the frontage of the district health directorate should be graded and ramp provided with guard rays. And then also the DVLA, there should be an immediate meeting between the youth of the community and the leadership of the community and the management of uh, DVL of office facilitated by the district assembly. We looked at two projects. The first one is the construction of one number, three unit classroom block with ancillary facilities at Sinsuayem Jungwa Mao 5. And then what we realized that for us, the key finding there was that either to the project, there was no school at all. And so students had to move to a different community. But then with the project, now about 117 people are benefiting. 65 boys, 52 girls are actually benefiting from this project. And so it is improving access to education. And then for the second project, we looked at the construction of male-female wards with facilities at um, Benso. And so for this project, we realized that even though it had been completed, there was no furniture and equipment. And so it is not operationalizing currently. And so the key finding or the recommendation that we want them to make to the assembly is that they should ensure that procurement process is actually expedited and that the furniture and equipment is provided to the facility so that it can actually be operational. Because we want to actually have impacts, we want to feel the impacts of the projects that the assembly does. We are also going to follow up on the key uh, findings and then the uh, recommendations that the uh, monitoring teams have you know outlined to ensure that the assembly is implemented for the betterment of infrastructure delivery at the local level. This is not the end. They are also supposed to also, also co-create or develop an action plan towards follow-up of the sense of implementation of those recommendations. At the end of the day, what we are seeking to achieve is that we have an informed citizen, citizenry that owns the cost intervention and its approaches and its tools and standards. And they are able to make use of them to make sure we have value for money. What cost is embarking now, I think it will go a long way to um, check the MMD is and then it will also help the various communities because if the district assembly are not doing their work right, this will expose them. Going forward, how is the assembly going to work with them to ensure continuity of what we have started? That is what we, we are looking at, the sustainability, because there are so many infrastructure projects that the assemblies are doing for the people, and the people need to be involved because they are the uh, beneficiaries of this project. So if we involve them right from day one to the completion and its usage, it makes the, 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 the project meet a target. The citizen monitoring team, beyond being able to monitor and also do an evaluation of the impacts of projects, one, you understand that one key feature of the cost approach is disclosure. You know, we have developed what we call the disclosure portal that enables the assemblies to disclose projects in a standardized format. But most of the time, it is left to the post secretariat to reach out to the assembly to disclose. And one of the things that the monitoring team will help us to do is making sure that they become the pressure group at the various assembly levels, where they're able to identify ongoing projects and also become the pressure group that, are, that also makes sure the assemblies disclose some of this information on the portal. I think that the cost project should not end. Um, and the reason is that um, every day, uh, we are building infrastructure for our country and there's a lot of perception of corruption in um, the construction sector. And cost actually tries to um, limit the amount of uh, corruption or tries to improve the integrity in construction. This is a good step, having this team in place is going to go a long way for us to achieve
this oversight role to ensure that the products that are being delivered meet a target for the uh, beneficiaries.